come onto your shins and you can do it standing either and you're just going to let your chin drop down into your chest and you're just thinking of um, the top of the spine, the cervical spine and you just let your shoulders drop and then very slowly I want you to think of your lower body supporting you as you move up through the spine nice and slow notice the movement of your pelvis and then come back onto your horizon so you're just simply rolling through the neck noticing how the shoulders move how does your pelvis want to move and you're just bringing your chin into your chest and then you're slowly reversing and as you reverse just notice can you feel the connection between your knees and your shins into the ground as you come up and as you exhale, can you just roll forwards with the head, chin to chest. Let the weight of the head drop down. And just slowly moving through. And as you move up to lift your head this time, I want you to think of your pelvic floor and the line from your pubic bone all the way up through your core into your chest. And just notice this lengthening from the bottom it's like a zipping up action as you come up, very subtle, and then as you exhale, it's like you're zipping down, the zip is undoing, and you're softening through the center line. So very subtly, feeling that your knees and your hips are in alignment, your shoulders on top, slowly close the eyes and just feel this movement through the spine as you simply let the chin drop into the chest, going slow, feeling more. Feel the back of the head, the neck, the shoulders slightly coming forward. And then as you come up, this is where the noticing really helps. So it's like a sense of lengthening from the base of the abdomen upwards until you're back on the horizon. Go to one more time. And as you bend over this time, let your shoulders go so that you come further forward and as you come further forward let your hands slide down your legs as if you're going to touch your knees and maybe you do but that's not the aim just wrap forwards and feel how now the shoulder blades and the middle upper back is engaged and now I want you to reverse same policy you're pressing down through the shins maybe even the feet feel the whole connection of the lower leg into the ground how the hips come forward, how the chest moves forward, the shoulders move back to enable all of this coordination of the spine. And at the top breathe in and as you exhale close the eyes and slowly roll through chin, chest, hands slide, pelvis goes slightly back and then slowly reversing Feel the lower limb press into the ground slightly, the hips come forward, the chest come up. Notice the back of the neck, the head coming into alignment with the backs of the shoulders and the hips. And one more time, draw the chin down and you're just letting your weight pour so it's not an active movement. You are just dropping forwards, dropping down. And this time, let your hands slide even more. Imagine little weights in your hand and then drop further and further until maybe you touch the floor. And just suspending and just feel now how you've come more into your middle back and even your lower back is engaged in this rounding. And keep the arms dropped. Just notice how your hips have gone backwards for your shoulders to go forwards. Have a breath. Notice if your front of your thighs are engaged. And then as you slowly move the hips to bring them back into alignment, feel how the spine is adjusting around that. So as the hips come forward, everything comes back up through the spine. And again, the full one slowly rolling down through the top vertebrae. Think of each vertebrae moving as you draw the weight of the body downwards. Keep the engagement 
So don't have your feet off the floor. Try and feel your feet connecting down. And as you drop more this time, notice how the pelvis has to go back to compensate for the forward action. And then once more, slowly, slowly feeling into the movement. What do your thighs have to do, your hips, to coordinate all of the alignment of the spine? And when you come up onto the horizon, just feel what the horizon is like for you. And as you come up, notice if your shoulders feel any the wider now, that your chest feel maybe a little more open across the center. And then from there, you've got your hand either side of your waist. And I just want you to slowly let the fingers find weight and just slowly drop the fingers down. So you're not dropping your head, it's your fingers that are leading the shoulder, the head. And just go where it's comfortable for you. So if it's too much of a stretch on the opposite side, do less. And now use the same principles. Press through the shins. Feel the pelvis. And now counterbalance with the opposite arm. And let the opposite arm reach down slowly for you to gradually pendulum all the way back up. If you find it hard to go slow, close the eyes. Just listen to my voice. And then once on centre, slide the other arm down. Again, let your head do nothing. Just let the arm lead. Notice how this affects your shoulders. Your opposite shoulder comes up. Your waist lengthens on the opposite side. Keep it easy. And when you feel like it, just lengthen the opposite arm for everything to come back to neutral. And up, so there's no effort in the neck. And let's go to the other side again, a little smoother, dropping. And as you drop, let go a little more, like your ear is heavy, your ear is weight, it's pouring out the water. And then the opposite arm reaches down, so again, no effort in your neck, no effort in your neck. And all the while, I'm just moving from using the side abdominals to support me in this movement, but there's not any huge effort at all. It's just a pouring of weight. Last time on the second side, feel into the opposite side of your body, and then as you exhale, lengthen the opposite arm. Slowly move through center. Good. Notice if your jaw was engaging at all there. And now you come down to Sit on your hunkers or whatever way is comfortable for you. And the jaw sometimes gets engaged in that side action. So close your eyes and we're going to do some nice jaw relief. So we're going to chew a sweet and imagine the chew is bringing your circular direction of your jaw. So you're chewing. And you can start with your mouth closed and try it. Think of a washing machine going one direction. And the lower jaw is moving. And then try it with the mouth open and just see how much more range of movement you get in the jaw. And then close the mouth, go the other direction. Again, if the washing machine image is helpful, Cracks and clicks are normal, and then open your mouth and just feel the whole range of movement in the jaw, especially the lower jaw. Last one. Good. And then just think of the, the upper jaw and the lower jaw and just swivel them. So like the upper jaw is going to the right and the lower jaw is going to the left. Really, it's just the lower jaw moving mostly, but just play with that. So you're sliding. <laughs> and it looks really funny, but you're just doing it at home. So you're fine. And then let that one go. And now I want you to have a big yawn. So yawn, stretch your mouth really wide. And then clench the teeth. Feel the neck and the jaw muscles engage and then slowly let that go and I want you to try and feel those muscles softening at the side of the neck. Once more, 
And if it's helpful, you could always bring your fingertips to the jaw joint and feel the extension here. So inhaling, yawn. Exhaling, slowly clench. And then slowly release before the teeth touch. And try and feel how the front of the neck and the side of the neck begins to soften. Good. And then another one more thing for the neck. We're just going to do as we did last time where we lengthened one hand down to the floor. But now as you lengthen the hand to the floor, take your opposite hand to your shin. So if you've got your right hand reaching down, your left hand comes onto your shoulder cap of the right side. So I'm lengthening down on one side and then as I do this, my head drops and I'm just pressing down into the shoulder on that side. And just feel the stretch across from the ear down to your clavicle. And then inhale and exhale. Bring your, ch your chin into your chest. Roll yourself forward slightly. And then slowly go to the midline, chin into chest. And then slowly reverse. Go back the way you came till your ear comes back onto the side, good. And then release the hand that's on the shoulder and lengthen that down to the other side. And as we did before, just pour the weight over and then the hand might flatten into the floor, let the ear come to the shoulder. You can bring the hand to the shoulder and then drop the head a little bit more if it feels comfortable for you. And then keeping the, ch the chin into the chest, roll your head and your neck forwards. And where there's discomfort, then move back from that. If it's too much, don't go there. And see, can you come to what feels like center? So you'd be looking down in between your legs and then slowly reverse. So we're moving through all of the little muscles of our neck, either side of our spine. And then once you come back, release the hand and then just move that hand down to the floor to counterbalance, to bring your head and your neck up. Good. And then from here, let's come onto all fours. So we're just going to come onto all fours and just base the hands really nice and wide. So stretching between the little finger and the thumb. And you're just going to bring your hips backwards and then slowly let your head lead you forwards. So your hips pull you back and your head pulls you forward. So just think about this, I call this the conveyor belt. So you're not going through your cat movements, but you're thinking of the long spine. So it's like a magnet is pulling your hips backwards, the body follows. A magnet pulls the head forwards, the body follows. And as you do this, you are moving through the wrist joint, mindfully just going where it's comfortable for you not hinging too far and then as you move now I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think about the spine floating in space either side or the shoulder blades either side so your spine is floating so as you move backwards I want you to think of the tailbone reaching backwards and as you move forwards, think of the crown of the head bringing yourself forwards. So there's a line floating in between the shoulder blades through the center of the rib cage. And as you do this, can you slow it down so that you're breathing in for one movement and you're breathing out for the other movement? Good. And the next time that you bring yourself back, you're going to bring your bum all the way to your heels if it feels good. Drop your elbows. And we're going to come through our baby cat. So planting the hands down, move through onto your elbows, your forearms, then come up through your cat pose, enjoying an arch. And then as you exhale, press down through the shins as we did at the start. And make sure that you're moving from the lower body, rounding over and bringing yourself all the way back and repeat drop the elbows 
moving forwards, arching your back, inhaling, bringing it up, exhaling, plant through the lower body, the shins, the feet, the knees, rounding, push off your hands a little to support you as you go back, and now close the eyes and just focus on the spine, so again, moving forwards, the crown of the head magnetized forwards, moving back, the tailbone is magnetized down towards the earth, the spine follows. So inhale, the top of the spine is reaching up. Exhale, the bottom of the spine is curving down to the earth. So we're thinking of our cat slightly different to normal. So you're thinking of the spine arching up as one unit and the spine rounding down as you go back. So it's like you're moving through a U shape as you come forwards through the spine and then it turns into like an N shape. So it's the inverse of that as you move back. So once more closing the eyes, just think of the spine, visualize it floating in the center of the body. Good. And then next time you come upwards from your elbows onto your hands, let's bring it in a circle and let's just incorporate all aspects of our back as we circle and go the other direction. Drop your head. Good. And then come back through the center. And let's drop through the middle and do the skipping rope for a moment. So let the hips and the shoulders mimic each other and the middle of the body is moving mostly. So the middle of the body goes up, over to one side, down through the center. Side, up, side and down. So just like a skipping rope. Close the eyes again and just think about the movements of your spine here. So the same as before, but they're just moving from side to side rather than from front to back. And then the next time you feel like it, change direction. Slow it down. Remember you're sensing into the spine. Close the eyes. Move slow to feel what's happening on the two sides of your spine. So it's not... In this movement, it's like one side of the spine is slightly different to the other in its focus of movement. Good, last one. And then tuck the toes under and let's have a little stretch for those who want that. You can plant your hands and lift your knees off if it feels good. And if you want, take the hips higher and then bring your ears in between your elbows onto your tippy toes, lengthen out your spine. Let your heels relax, have a breath in. Press through your wrists so that you're going up towards the ceiling with your hips. One more breath in. And as you exhale, slowly, slowly draw the knees down and down and down. Good. And then once you come down, drop your chin into your chest and come to sit. And when you're sitting now, we're going to take one hand to the opposite knee, whatever hand you want. So taking a hand to the opposite knee, the other hand to your lower back, inhale, center. And exhale, slowly press into the side of your knee, turn the lower body, the middle body, the upper body, and just have a nice twist around. So you're moving lower body, middle body, upper body, and the hands are supporting you. So the front hand is acting like a lever, kind of a push off. And as you come back, soften the belly, the ribs, the chest, the head, and let everything come back to center. Let's do that side once more. Inhale to fill. Fill the chest and exhale. Let the hips move. Let the belly move. Shoulders. Close the eyes this time and have two breaths here. Breathing in. And out. Once more. 
And as you exhale, soften the belly back to centre. Let the head come back too. And then let your hands slowly swap sides. So just changing over, changing knee, other hand to the lower back. Inhale, fill at the centre. And as you exhale, slide your hand forward to turn the lower body. Then the hips, the belly, the shoulders, all the way up. Breathing in, find a little push off from that lower hand. The other hand reminding you to lengthen through your spine up. And as you exhale, slowly bring it back. If you find this difficult, don't go as far. Or sit on a chair and hold on to the side of the chair. Once more, inhaling up. Exhaling, turn lower body, middle body, upper body. And this time, close the eyes to long, slow breaths. Breathing in. Fill the belly, the chest. Exhale, soften. And again. And as you exhale, soften and bring everything back to center. Good. And then just circle your shoulders up to your ears and down, up and down. And then bring yourself to the side. And then from here, we're only going to do two of these. We're going to plant our hands, turn our fingers towards our bum or our heels. And we're just going to bend the elbows back and just wriggle your shoulders from side to side. And then plant the feet and make sure that you can feel your feet on the ground. They're not too close that you don't have the support of your legs. So a little bit away from you. And then lift your bum slightly up and then lift your bum down. And now adjust, what feels right for you? Do you need to move your hands forwards? And then just coming into a reverse tabletop, thinking of the spine again, hips up, and trying to find that conveyor belt, that line through the spine, and then slowly lowering down through the body, chin into chest. We just do two of these. Inhaling, press into the feet, Exhale, slowly lower, chin into chest. Good, one more time. Press through the feet, chin into chest as much as you want. And slowly lower. Good. And then from here, you're going to come onto your back. So you're going to hug your knees into your chest, rock down and hug your knees in. And as you hug your knees in, just feel the contact of the lower back and the spine against the floor. And then as you exhale, I want you to let the knees rock away. And as the knees push away, they lengthen your arms. And once more, this time letting the hands pull the knees in. And then let the knees pull away to lengthen the arms. Good. And once you find this length, Drop one leg, drop the other, and that's probably your perfect position here for your feet. And just notice as you're here, rest, close the eyes. And just notice how your lower back is against the floor. How are the two sides of your back? Is there any difference in the contact? And then the shoulder blades on each side. From everything we've done so far, it would have leveled a lot of the two sides. But just notice if there's any significant differences for you. And then just exaggerate the flattening of your back into the floor. So it's like you're hollowing your stomach. And then as you come out of that, I want you to roll through the pelvis so that you can arch your lower back. So if you wanted to put your hand underneath your lower back, there'd be space. So slowly moving to flatten your back. The rest of the body is just following the movement. So allow everything to be soft so that it can move. It's agile. The joints are free to move in the hips. So you're flattening. 
and you're rolling away into an arch of the back. And the next time that you flatten, just relax again and just notice after just doing that if there's any subtle change in your body, the two sides. And I want you to think of a clock. I want you to think of your pubic bone, the base of your spine as 6 o'clock and your belly button as 12 o'clock. And so as you do these two movements, you're dropping, as you arch, 6 o'clock is touching down into the ground. And then as you come backwards, the belly part is connecting into the floor, that's 12 o'clock is in contact with the ground. So just get that concept in your head, moving from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, through the center line of your body, and then come into neutral. And I want you to think of the two hips as 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock. And I want you to slowly seesaw from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. So one hip is lowering a little on one side. Notice how that affects your waist and your rib cage. Slowly move through the center and feel the other hip connect down into the floor. So moving slow, feeling everything, not just the area you're moving, but the whole body. Nice. And now I want you to try and make a full circle. So if you're going down with say 9 o'clock and then you're pressed down through 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. So slowly make a circle and try and touch each of these quarters of your pelvis down. And you'll notice that as you move the hand of the clock around, you're going through an arch on one side of the pelvis and a flatten on the other side and vice versa. And just feel how you're massaging the lower back. And just enjoy the movement. And the next time you come to either 12 or 6 o'clock, just pause for a second and inhale and arch. Exhale, flatten. Keep the eyes closed and just feel the connection between the sacrum and the shoulder blades and the head and the chin. And if you remember what direction you just went, try and reverse the direction. So circling. And if you've forgotten, just go one side that you prefer and then the likelihood is it's the other side, the one you don't prefer or naturally do, that would be your second side. So pressing down through the body into each of these points. And it's a bit of a belly dance, so it's lovely for the abdominals in fact. This is a lovely massage especially for the small intestine. And doing one fluid circle, I want you to come back into the center and just come to neutral, whatever neutral is for you. Rest. If you want, you can let your legs be long for a moment and just notice how your lower back feels. And come back to that image of the spine floating in the body. In between the two sides of the pelvis. Between the ribs, the shoulder blades. Between the ears. Even between the eyes, sense the spine. And maybe you just can sense your spine in your lower body, trying sense the joining of it through the middle back all the way into your neck and then into your head your skull 
Nice. And then bend one knee out to the side, bring it to standing. And now I want you to think of the belly button and the sternum. So if you bring your hands to your uh, throat and you draw a line down, you get to this bony part, the chest bone, and just come a little bit down. And as you go down, slide down the sternum, the bone, until you get to a soft bit. So you're sliding down the chest bone until you get to the soft bit. Yeah, and at that soft bit, I want you to think of that connection and the belly button. So it's kind of like the spread of a thumb to the index finger. And I want you to just flatten your back into the ground and try and sense what would these two points be if they were connected into the floor. So the back of the ribs and the back of the belly button. And I want you to think of these two points as your 12 o'clock and your 6 o'clock now. So that you're focusing just on this part of the middle torso. So what we're going to do is we're just going to lift the pelvis a fraction off the floor so that you can feel it a little more easily. So you're thinking of 12 o'clock, so the bit behind the rib cage connecting into the floor. And then you flatten down, you lower your pelvis and you feel the space behind the belly button. And so I just want you to move through these two points like a seesaw, just massaging the space between the belly button and the lowest point of the rib cage in your back. So to do this, I'm just lifting my pelvis a fraction and then lowering it. And I'm just massaging the space here in the middle back. And a part of the back that we never think about and it's hard to be in contact with. So just slowly moving up with your pelvis, find the back of the rib cage, that point, and then slowly lower down. And it's just like you're going down a few vertebrae to what feels like the back of the belly button, and then coming back up. And one more time, lowering down. And this time, as you come up, I want you to come higher so that you feel now that you're arching up and maybe you're higher up into the sternum. And I want you to just massage down from the back of the spine, slowly down to the base of the rib cage, the back of the belly button, and now all the way down with the pelvis all the way down until you feel your sacrum resting on the floor again. And then inhale and arch, arch everything, and exhale, flatten, and then slowly draw up your spine away from the floor, all the way up. Feel the two points of the backs of the shoulder blades connecting into the ground, and then slowly moving, feel the back of the skull against the floor, and slowly massage down from your upper back vertebrae by vertebrae, really slow because we're trying to balance the two sides of the spine all the way down, massaging each one so it comes in contact with the floor until you're relaxed. And once you're relaxed down, then inhale, arch while on the floor. Exhale, flatten while still on the floor. Press into your feet to curve the pelvis up vertebrae by vertebrae, coming through the spine. Feel your shoulders open, the tops of your shoulder blades pressing back, your chin into your chest, and slowly massage down one last time. Really slow. Really slow, all the way down. Good. And this time when you come down, just notice the contact of your body as you rest now. Just notice your spine in contact with the floor. You might feel more of a sense of the whole spine connected down rather than just the upper and the lower, lower body. And I want you to now think about where the spine connects in from the upper back into the arch of your neck to the base of your skull. 
So try and close your eyes and think of it like the similar bridge movement we just did and think of that vertebrae journey upwards into the neck inhaling just visualize that and then tracing it into the skull and then exhaling just think of going from the skull into the base of the neck and now we're going to move the whole spine but our focus is on our cervical spine our upper neck so as you inhale I want you to arch keep your pelvis on the ground this time arching through the back and just notice the, the upper spine the neck how does my neck move in this position? And then exhale as you flatten through the rest of your spine, how does your neck move? So I want you to do this movement through the whole spine, but I want you to focus just on the awareness of your neck, your chin coming into the chest, what does that create for your neck? And as you exhale, where does the chin move to? Does it move away? And just thinking of the neck muscles slowly, one more time. Chin into chest, typically when you arch. And as you flatten, the chin moves away from your chest. And if you need to explore that once more, just slowly going through it or resting. Can you feel when the chin is into the chest, the topmost part of the upper spine connecting down into the floor? And then as you exhale, feel how that flattens and releases and the neck comes into more of a neutral position as the lower body comes into neutral. And just notice that for yourself. Inhale and fill. Fill into the chest and as you exhale, I want you to relax the rib cage, relax the ears and I slowly want you to think of the back of the skull and I want you to slowly roll to one side of the skull so that your nose moves over to one side, your ear comes to the ground on one side and then slowly allow the weight of the back of the skull to roll into the floor to bring you back into centre. So try not to use your neck muscles here. Try and just let the weight of the head roll your head to one side. And as you exhale, slowly roll your head to the other side. And as you do this, I want you to notice what is happening in your shoulders to facilitate this movement. So as you roll across the back of the head, the side that your head turns to, the shoulder blade presses down and the other shoulder lifts up slightly to help you turn. As you come back, to help you move, the shoulder where you're facing comes up and as you turn, the other shoulder presses down. So just play with this. So when your head rolls to one side, usually that's quite comfortable, but to come up if it feels awkward or heavy, Use the shoulder on that side to lift up slightly and just notice how that allows the movement to trickle into the neck to turn the head. One last time, either side. And just think of the skull being rolling across the back of the head. And the next time you come back into the center, just rest in the center. And you can let your legs be long or bent, whatever you prefer. Whatever feels nice for you. And rest, just notice how you feel. Notice if your hips feel a little more level, your shoulder blades. the sense of your ears either side. And wh whatever feels better for you, whether it's having your legs long or bent, you can be in whichever position you prefer. And now thinking of the uppermost part of the spine, 
the space between the eyes, I want you to close the eyes, relax your eyeballs, and just let your eyes rest back in your skull. As you breathe in, I want you to just imagine the rehydration of your eyes with the breath. And as you exhale, just let the eyes relax more. Once more, breathing in. Exhale, soften the eyes, the eyebrows. And I want you to slowly find just moving your eyes and not moving your face. I want you to let the eyes move upwards and downwards with your eyes closed. So, relaxed body, just keep the head, the face still, move your eyes upwards and move it downwards. So the nose stays still, slowly move the eyes upwards and downwards. Good. And then find what feels like your horizon and then just move the eyes without moving the face sidewards back to center and sideways as if they want to look over your shoulder and try that a few times slowly and then come back to center and then with um, an idea where the tip of your nose is I want you to make a circle with the eyes around the tip of your nose so again, your face isn't moving, it's just the eyes, closed eyes, moving in the sockets, one direction, making a little circle as if there was a dot at the tip of your nose. And then make the circle spiral wider. And reverse. Make the circle smaller. And once it gets smaller, stay there a little while. Just notice if you're just imagining it or are you actually moving your eyes with your face still. And then relax your eyes, breathe in. Relax your eyes and your eye sockets. Exhale, soften. And this time as you breathe in, breathe into all the muscles of the face, breathing in. And exhale, imagine a warm face cloth on your face and just let all the muscles of your scalp, your forehead, your cheeks, your jaw rest. And one more time, breathing in. And as you exhale, let go and rest the back of the head into the floor. And rest deeply for a moment, softening the eyes, the ears, the mouth. And just allow your sense of the back of the head connecting down into the floor, sensing the spine through the neck into the head. And as you soften the eyes, it's like it's giving the permission of the top of the spine to just soften where it connects into the brain. And so let's think of the brain for a moment that as we breathe in, see if you can sense like two sides of a walnut, the two sides of your brain. And the two sides may feel very different or your sense of them. But as you exhale, I want you to just think of a balloon softening. So as you inhale, you're spreading fresh energy through the brain on both sides. And as you exhale, softening both sides. Kind of like the lungs expanding the two sides and as you exhale the two sides just soften and rest. And as you exhale now just let your whole body sink. 
the two sides of the skull, the two shoulder blades, two sides of your pelvis, the legs, the arms, and then having softened all of these bony structures, you can just sense the spine floating in the middle, nice and long and lengthened. And without doing anything or changing anything in your body, making sure of course that you're comfortable, just think about breathing in through the base of the spine. And as you exhale, just let the breath exhale down the spine. And again, without any effort, so as you breathe in, just sense the breath coming in through the tailbone. And it may only go a few inches high, and then as you exhale, just let the spine soften. And guide the breath, inhaling up. And gradually with every breath, it's like you're going one vertebrae higher. It's like you're taking a further step up the staircase. And as you exhale, it's like you're sliding down the banisters. <laughs> and be patient with yourself. And I want you to give equal focus to the two sides of the staircase, two sides of the spine. And at this point, you may just be coming up to the base of the ribs, through the lower back. And just staying with your natural breath, no effort or pushing, just keeping your focus. So within the rest, staying soft. Staying relaxed, but keeping your conscious awareness in the spine. And your breath gradually coming up towards the back of the rib cage. Breath now, massaging the spine. Without any effort, just your awareness. Tracing the line of the spine. towards the rib cage, going through from the lower back into the middle back, traveling slowly through the middle back, a little bit at a time. Being gentle, being aware. And taking it up now, maybe it feels like you have gone all the way up into the space between the shoulder blades. Trickling your awareness upwards. And 
releasing, consciously relaxing the two sides of the spine as the breath goes downwards. So either side of the spine we have these muscles that can be quite tight so when I refer to the two sides of the spine I'm referring to them. And just notice if your rib cage is engaging in your breath now a little bit more as you're moving and sensing into the middle body coming up towards the upper chest. How can you keep it soft and sense more? And as you breathe in, just sense all of your awareness traveling now to the base of the neck. As you exhale, softening all the way back down. So as you come up from the rib cage towards the base of the neck, there's a very important gland here, the thymus gland, and that's either side of your spine. So as you get into this area just before, so you come down your throat and you've got the soft area and then you've got the bony bit and then your hand just connects into your chest here. It might be nice to keep your hand here for the this part so that as you breathe in, just softening, allowing the breath to massage into this area where the thymus is. And as you exhale, just releasing any tension, any effort that this gland does for us every day. So with the hand here, it's the soothing touch, it's just allowing this very bony part of our chest to feel a little softness in our body. And again, you can be doing this lying down or if you find you got sleepy and you need to do it sitting up, you can do it sitting up either. And then notice as you sense the breath coming up into the spine, up towards the base of the neck. Just notice this kind of lengthening from tail in towards the neck. And as you exhale, the softening. So it's like a rope is getting taunt. And then as you exhale, it's like the rope relaxes. And bring your awareness now through the vertebrae of the neck, gradually up. And on your next inhale, just sensing the breath coming into the base of the skull. And as you exhale, softening from the base of the skull down the spine. And then softening all the way back up up to behind the eyes if that feels good and then as you exhale dropping your awareness down the back of the spine and now we're going to come into a little more active breathing so as you breathe in you can arch your back a little way and as you exhale just allow the whole spine to flatten into the floor or if you're seated rounding back Inhale, bring the breath up through the front of the spine. Exhale, flattening the lower back, relaxing all the spine, the head drops forward. Inhale, arching. Breath up the front. Exhale, flattening, breath down the back. Open your mouth and breathe through your mouth. And exhale through your mouth as you breathe out. So it's like a sigh. 
So it just allows more energy to come into the spine. So you're arching and flattening whether you're lying down or if you're sitting up, you're arching and exhaling, flattening back, which would mean you're rounding forwards. Two more cycles, breathing up the front, bringing clarity to the brain, exhale, letting go of any tension and tiredness and fogginess down. And last one up, breathing in clarity, fresh energy into your nervous system, exhale, softening, releasing any tension. And so from wherever you are, just curl up onto your side and come into a seated position if that feels good for you, taking your time, moving slow. Moving slow, keeping the eyes closed, and just notice now as you sit how your spine feels. Does it feel light? Can you imagine your spine like a thread and your head like a balloon floating upwards? Keep the eyes closed and just sense if there is a feeling of space and length from the tail to the head. And sit for a moment, just as you are, nothing extra, nothing to do, but just be aware, awake. Come back to that image of the spine floating in between your scapula, your shoulder blades. And just notice if your sense of your spine is a little more clear, a bit longer than usual, and maybe you can sense the head lifting like this balloon, floating upwards, lighter and longer. And then one last time, breathing up through the base of the spine, up to the heart and out through the head, inhaling up. And exhaling, just let all that energy drop down through the center of the line of the body, down into the floor, plugging into the earth. Take one hand to the sternum, the chest bone, one hand to the belly and make a soft circular motion with your hands, gentle and soft. And then I want you to move up and down so the hands are sliding along what would be the spine or the front of the sternum, the chest bone. Just up and down and just feel the length here in the front of the body. And then take your hands to the back of the body and wherever you can feel into just sliding the hands up and down from your tail, your sacrum, up in between your shoulder blades, whatever your mobility allows. And then take the hands up over the chest and then just slide one hand in front of the chest and one at the back and just feel the upper spine, front and back, the sense of this. And then come into the base of the neck, either side and either side of your neck, just connecting into the two sides of your neck and imagine the spine in the middle, up into the back, into the occiput at the back of your head. And then your ears, cupping your ears either side of your head and I want you to kind of lift your skull and lifting up and feel like you're letting go of the balloon slide your fingers through your scalp until they raise off your head you can even brush your hands up from the back of the head the neck the back of the head upwards just to give your sense this upward direction and then let the hands just rest and just Close the eyes a moment longer and just feel now 
this extra few inches that you've just grown. You might feel like a giraffe. <laughs> Notice how your chest may feel lighter and softer. And then keeping the head and the neck lovely and long, just seal in this awareness that this is the length of your full spine. Most people have no idea how long their spine is. And this will change your perception of yourself, how you walk, how you sit and stand. And then from there, just drop your ear to one shoulder softly, as we did at the start, pouring. And just notice if it's any easier now to do this movement. And then draw forwards, chin into chest, slow, slow, slow. Notice if your chest is softer. Come up through the center line. Remember that center line movement we did at the very start of this session. Up through the center of the body. And then drop to the other side with your ear. Breathe in, exhale, rolling forwards. Chin into chest and up through the center line. And this time, if you want, doing a full half circle, dropping one side, slow circle forwards to one side, the other side, and then returning the way you came. And then come back to the center before you roll through to come back up. Breathing into the rib cage, and lastly, a twist to finish it all off. Sitting cross legged, take one hand to the opposite knee, so opposite hand to knee, other hand is behind you on the floor, and slowly move from the hips, the chest, all the way to look behind you, twisting. Close the eyes, two or three deep breaths. Notice the range of your spine. It might be a really deeper, fuller feeling of a twist. And then as you exhale, belly back, chest back. Gradually coming back to center and change hands. Other hand to the opposite knee. Inhale, center. Exhale, turn the lower body, middle body, upper body. Close the eyes, two to three breaths. And inhaling. And as you exhale, slowly turning from the waist, gradually coming back. Keep your eyes closed, keep yourself soft. Again, one hand to the heart, one hand to the belly. Gentle rub. Inhale, filling through the spine and exhaling. Relaxing everything. Notice how you feel when we work on the spine. There's a sense of uh, softness in the whole body. Sense of um, relaxing of the brain, the face, the jaw. And so today we went through all of the spinal movements, the flexion, the extension, the rotation. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this session together. And let's do one circle of the arms all the way up, stretching through the spine. Exhale, bring the hands down to the heart, breathing in and exhale, bowing to yourself, thanking yourself for the time dedicated to your practice and your absolute well-being. Thank you for joining me today.